Hello friends, welcome to JavaScript Interactive Applications video tutorials series. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss how to create odd or even number interactive application in JavaScript. So let's get started. I search for notepad. I select the notepad. You can see that the notepad got open. Here I am going to write the basic HTML5 document structure code. I say less than exclamation mark doc type HTML. By reading this line of code, browser understands the given HTML document is HTML5 document. We know that HTML document begins with opening HTML tag and ends with closing HTML tag. In the opening HTML tag, I say lang equal to en, which indicates language of this document is English. We know that HTML document is divided into two sections. One is the head section, another one is the body section. To indicate the head section, I say opening head tag and closing head tag. To indicate the body section, I say opening body tag and closing body tag. This indicates the head section and this indicates the body section guys. Here inside the head tag, I say meta char set equal to utf-8 which indicates character set of this document is unicode transformation format 8. I am going to save this file. I say file save as. I save the file at the desktop with the name default.html. Both sides I put double quotations and say save. I minimize it. You can see that default.html page is created. I right click on it, say open with Google Chrome. You can see that default.html page is open in the Chrome. Title is set to default.html which is same as the file name. I want to change the page title. To change the title of a web page, we take help of the title tag which we write in the head section. I say opening title tag and closing title tag. Here. Inside the title tag, I say odd or even number app. I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. You can see that the title is changed to odd or even number app. Next, I am going to create the application structure here using HTML. To define the structure, we take help of HTML because HTML is a structural language. I say here opening div tag and closing div tag. I am going to identify this div uniquely by giving an id of container. Container. Then inside this div I say label. Opening label, closing label. Inside the label I say number colon. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, you can see the number colon text is displayed. Below that I want to display a text field. What I do here I say br. I am adding a line break and then I say input type is equal to text. I am going to identify this input field uniquely by giving an id of txt num and the default value will be 0. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, you can see that the text field is created where user is going to enter a number. Next I am going to connect both of these fields by using the for attribute. Here I say txt num which indicates this label is for txt num. Next I am going to create two buttons. I say here br, two times br, I am adding two line breaks and then I say here input type is equal to button and the value I set here test and then I close. File, save, Go to browser and refresh. You can see that the test button is created. Next I create reset button. I say input type is equal to button and the value of that will be reset. Close. I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. You can see reset button is also created. Below here I am going to display enter an integer number. I say here two times a br. I am adding two line breaks. And then I say span, opening span and closing span tag. I am going to identify it uniquely by giving an id of spn result. And here I say enter an integer number. 
I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. See, it is telling enter an integer number. By reading this, user understands that he has to enter here an integer number. That is the structure of our application guys. Next, using CSS, we are going to present this application differently because CSS is a presentational language. To add CSS, we take help of the style tag. I say opening style tag and closing style tag. Here I say type is equal to text or CSS. Inside the style tag, we write CSS code. Here I say hash container. What I am telling here? I am telling to select an HTML element whose ID attribute value is set to container. This HTML element ID attribute value is set to container. So its background dash color should be light gray. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, you can see that light gray background color is applied. Next I am going to set the width. To set the width, I say here width of 20%. I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. You can see that width is reduced to 20%. I am going to add some padding. So I say here P A D D I N G padding of 10 pixels. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, you can see that some padding is added around the content here. So that's the presentation of our application guys. Next, we are going to add behavior. To add behavior, we take help of the JavaScript. So, to embed JavaScript, we take help of the script tag. I say opening script tag, closing script tag. Here I say type is equal to text or JavaScript. Inside the script tag, we write the JavaScript code guys. I'm going to save this file, save, go to browser and refresh. You can see that the test button is not working, reset button is not working. When we click on the test button, we have to display here the number is even or odd guys. Okay, so let's implement the test button. When we click on the test button, so here I say on click. On click is an event. On click, we are going to execute test function from the JavaScript. So I am going to create this function, test function. How do we create a function? We write the function keyword, then we write the function name bracket bracket opening flower bracket, closing flower bracket. When we click on the test button, test function from JavaScript is executed. Just to test whether it is working or not, I say alert bracket bracket semicolon in double quotations, I say clicked. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. If I click on test button, we get an alert box saying clicked. That means the function is working guys. Next. What I want actually is I want to get the value of this text field. I want to get the value of txt num. So what we do here, we say document dot get element by id in double quotations. We pass the id txt num and then we say dot value. What are we telling? We are telling to get the value of the element whose id is set to txt num. So this element id is set to text txt num. So its value 0 is written here. We can see that by saying alert and display the value. File, save, go to browser and refresh. So if I click on test, you see it is showing 0. I close it. If I say here 2, I say test, it is returning 2. If I say here 3, test, it is returning 3, you see that. So document dot get element by id txt num dot value gives you value of this field guys but remember the value that you are getting here is of type string is of type string i can prove that if i say here type of file save go to browser and refresh if i say test it is telling string the value that you are getting the zero is actually a string type okay if i give here two and say test it is telling the value that you are getting is of type string. The two that you are getting here is of type string. It is telling the two that you are getting the whatever the value you are getting its type is actually string guys. It is telling that the two that you are getting is of type string. It's not a number two. So we have to convert that into a number. To do that we take help of the number function guys. We take help of the number function. So document dot get element by id txt num dot value is giving you a string value. 
So that string value you are giving to the number function. What the number function does? It converts that string value into a number guys. It converts it into a number. So if you say type of that number, definitely you will get number displayed. If I say file, save, go to browser and, and refresh, this time you are going to see number instead of string. If I click on test, it is telling number. If I say here to test, it is telling number. That means we are successfully able to get the value of txt num able to convert it into a number. That number we are going to put inside a variable called as num guys. Okay. We are going to put that number, whatever the number we are getting, we are going to put that inside the num. Okay. It may be two, three or whatever. Okay. Next we want to find whether this number is a even number or odd number. So how do we find the given number is a even number or odd number? We know that in mathematics, if we divide a number by two, if we get the remainder zero, then it is considered as the even number. Otherwise it is considered as a odd number. For example, I search for the MS paint. Okay. For example, if I say here two divided by two, two into one is two, two minus two is zero. If you divide a number by two, if you get the remainder zero, then it is considered as the even number. So how do we get the remainder guys? How do we get this remainder in JavaScript? We get the remainder with the help of mod operator. Mod operator is called remainder operator. It gives you remainder of the division operation. For example, if you say two mod two, it gives you remainder zero. If I say here three divided by two, two into one is two, three minus two is one. So that is the remainder, right? When you say three mod two, you get the remainder one guys. Okay. Let me prove that. Let me prove that. If I come here and say alert, alert, I take the number mod by two. I say semicolon. Check out what happens. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. Okay. If I enter here two and say test, it is giving zero, right? It is giving zero. We are getting this remainder. Next, if I enter three, we should get the remainder one, right? So here we are taking the number and saying mod two. Okay. So if I come here and say three and say test, you see, we are getting one. So num mod two is giving us the remainder of the division operation. Either it will be zero or one. If we get the zero, we can consider it as an even number. Otherwise we can consider it as a odd number guys. That is good. So it is odd number, right? Because the remainder is not zero. So if I take four divided by two, two into two is four, four minus four, the remainder is zero. So it's a even number. When you divide a number by two, if you get the remainder zero, it's a even number. Otherwise it's an odd number guys. So if I say five, divided by two, two into two is four, five minus four is one. So this is not zero. Definitely it's a odd number, right? Now, what are we going to do is we are going to check against the value zero. So we can say if num mod two is equal to equal to zero, it's a even number. Otherwise it's a odd number, right? So if you see file, save, go to browser and refresh. If I enter two, what happens? Of course, it takes two, two mod two is zero, zero equal to zero is true. So we are going to get true guys. If I say here test, it is telling true. If I enter three, definitely it says false. Why? Because, because three mod two is one, one equal to zero is false. So we have successfully written a condition which says either true or false. True means even, false means odd. So what we can do is, we can take help of the if condition. So we can say here ifs, opening floor bracket, closing floor bracket. If this condition is true, definitely the number is a even number. So what we can say here, we can say document dot get element by ID in double quotations. I say SPN result. I'm getting the reference to this span tag dot inner HTML inner HTML indicates the content guys. I'm telling 
the content of the HTML element whose ID is set to SPN result should be equal to num plus whatever the num is plus plus is even number understanding like for example for example if I enter the number 2 okay consider num is 2 2 mod 2 is 0 0 equal to 0 is true so the content of SPN result will be 2 is even number else okay else else if it is not 0 means if it is 1 definitely the number will be odd number so what we can do we can copy this and paste here and say num is odd number num is odd number very simple so if I say file save go to browser and refresh if I enter here 2 and say test it says 2 is even number if I say 3 test it says 3 is odd number so what is happening here when we click on the test button we are getting that 3 right we are getting the 3 3 mod 2 is what 3 mod 2 is 1 right 3 mod 2 is 1 1 equal to 0 is false as this condition is false the false block is executed it sets the content of SPN result to 3 is odd number that's how it works guys I hope you guys are clearly understanding if I come back and say 4 test 4 is even number 5 test 5 is odd number so we have successfully implemented the test button next we are going to implement the reset button guys so when we click on the reset button the text field should reset back to 0 and here we should see enter an integer number so very simple here I am going to say on click when we click on the reset button from the JavaScript reset function should be called okay I copy that come down I create that function by saying function reset opening floor bracket closing floor bracket here I say the value of txt num should be equal to 0 and the content of SPN result the content of SPN result should be equal to should be equal to enter an integer number if I save it come here and refresh if I enter here 2 and say test it says 2 is even number when I click on reset you see the text field is set to 0 and here enter an integer number is getting displayed if I say 3 test 3 is odd number reset 4 4 is even number reset 5 test 5 is odd number reset so we have successfully written the code for odd or even number interactive application in JavaScript congratulations guys I hope you guys have clearly understood I suggest you people to watch this video again and again try it yourself if you try it yourself you get more clear idea guys you can able to create other applications for this video tutorial this much is enough friends in the upcoming video tutorials we are going to discuss more about JavaScript interactive applications if you like this video hit the like button and share with your friends so that everyone will get benefited for more benefits and be up to date do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel keep learning keep coding keep sharing thank you guys thank you very much see you in the next tutorial